Hello, everyone. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, perfect, fantastic. Um, so I want to welcome all of you to CASM 2024. This is our second conference ever. And it's quite, um, how do I say, an exceptional moment for us because not only is it one of the biggest events ever, but we're also aiming for it to be accessible. So as you can see, we have fantastic sign language interpreters with us. Uh, you have to tell me if I'm talking too quickly. <laughs> Uh, and they will be also indicating you if you might be speaking too quickly also for them to be signing. We're recording the whole event and it will then be available for everyone on YouTube. Um, this way we really want to make sure that we set an example for accessibility and events. That's also why you have uh, programs translated in Braille and we have a um, ramp for the access on the stage and make it wheelchair accessible. Why is it so important for us? So maybe a few words about CASM. CASM is the community of human analog space missions. So the majority of you are part of analog missions or have been part of, have organized something or are very interested. And the problem is there's so many of them. So many of us from so many different countries and organizations and there's no standards, there's huge discrepancies and there's actually a lot that we can exchange on. So many, many interesting points, so many research to be conducted, so many points to be improved. And one topic is power astronauts. And this is the whole theme. It's not just analog missions, but also power astronaut and accessibility. Because as we can see, there's huge discrepancies between people, but also between um, types of handicap. And we want to really set an example in our events, but also in the research that we do. So CASM, what is it exactly? It's uh, conferences, it's uh, events that we did in workshops, but it's also uh, Paracasm, which is a consortium on research on power astronauts, and it's also a wiki database of our analog missions. So if you've been pestered in the last year, year and a half with us to fill up the database, that's normal. It's because we want to make sure that there's a way to research all those missions and to know about those missions for the wider public and also for other people from analog missions. And lastly, there's also a research database that we are now working on, which is compiling all research related to analog space missions to improve um, research quality, but also to avoid redundancy. So this is what CASM does. I'm incredibly thankful for all my team, really. Um, it's, it's been more than a year and a half to plan all of this. Uh, and all of us are working or studying on the site, so all of you are actually in the same situation, I believe, so you know what it is. <laughs> but I think having all those fantastic speakers also with us is really a testament to how much work we actually put in this and how important this topic is to all of us. Uh, a little bit of etiquette. So before you speak, uh, please, uh, normally about five, ten minutes before, go to our audio video support team. Woohoo! Bit shout out to them. <laughs> And they will be miking you up, okay? So they put a little mic for you, or they will give you some microphones. The sessions are about 45 minutes long, except for these ones, uh, the first one. Um, and at the end, there's a Q&A, so we'll be passing microphones. Uh, just make sure, again, that you speak clearly, not too quickly, so not like what I'm doing right now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and so that they can, they can, everybody can understand you. Obviously, most of us, our native language is not English. Uh, so make sure that you are understandable and it can be translated. Um, put the mic on, Q&A at the end. We have lunch planned at midday, and then we have some sessions. We're going to have a panel talk this afternoon about power astronauts. And then at 5.30, we'll go and do a group picture so that we have a nice souvenir from this. But then we start again on, Monday, on, on Sunday, so <laughs> don't worry. I just want to make sure that everybody's there because some people will leave a bit early on Sunday. So let's get a group picture um, at 5.30 this afternoon. Uh, Chloe Carrière cannot make her talk today, so she will probably come tomorrow for a 10-minute intervention. So we might be starting a bit earlier, let's see. Uh, but I really want to thank uh, not only our sponsors, but everyone who supported us, including Mars Society UK, uh, SGAC, the Divine Arts and Figures group. Uh, we want to, uh, to thank Nagha GTS also, who helped organize. Uh, thank my team, and of course, eSpace and Space Innovation. And speaking of which, I think that Martin has something that she wants to say. So thank you so much and have a wonderful session. Uh, so, can you all hear me? Um, so I'm Martine from uh, the EPFL Space Center and I'd like to welcome you to Switzerland, uh, to the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. 
Uh, I work here. I've been working here for 20 years now in the space domain. And it's uh, every day is just, just absolutely exciting for me. Um, EPFL is a young, it's only 55 years old, my age. Uh, it's um, about over thir 13,000 students um, and 6,000 employees, 130 nationalities. Um, what else could I say? Uh, five hundred, more than 500 uh, labs and uh, institutes. We uh, built a satellite. We built this first uh, Swiss uh, CubeSat satellite in, uh, and launched it in 2009. It still works. So we're very proud of that. First satellite built entirely or almost by the students at EPFL with other institutes uh, around Switzerland. Very proud of that. Uh, that helped us to de develop the sector also in uh, the region. And uh, we had a lot of startups uh, coming out of, uh, of that, a lot of interest. So, um, hands up for the people that are not engineers nor physicists, please. <laughs> okay, so. Um, EPFL has a few very interesting domains that I will read to you, and this will mostly interest um, the physicists and the engineers. Could I have your name, please, sir? Tom. Tom. Are you ready? <laughs> so, opto electronics and integrated photonics, micro electromechanical systems. Micro opto electro mechanical systems. Good. <laughs> Electrical, electronic, electro um, mechanical components. Ah! <laughs> Should I have to do that one again? No, yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, electrical, electronic, electrico mechanical components. Material science and associated, associated processes, uh, advanced manufacturing, metrology, micro and millimeter waves. So that um, is not really uh, very touching for me. So I'll give uh, a few examples to the people who are neither engineers nor physicists. So let's take an example of a camera that would be on the moon and that could see very high contrasts because there are very high contrasts, contrasts on the moon, black and white, and you have to be able to see them properly. Um, satellite communications within the satellite and without with only light. Or origami-inspired robotics that could help astronauts in their daily lives. How about optimizing a workspace in microgravity? Or 3D printing of regolith for moon habitats? Or maybe artificial intelligence for Earth observation? So this is all the things that EPFL does. We have about 350 students that are working in the space domain. They have associations. And uh, some of them do satellites. Uh, and actually, they sent out their computer last year on deorbit. And it's working. Uh, some of them do uh, rockets and they sometimes win the competition. Uh, competition actually, they no longer go to the US, they go to, to Portugal now. Uh, some of them make, um, let me see, analog missions. Well, I have a good one about that. <laughs> so a few years ago, a student, Chloe, came to me and she said, 
hey, I'd like to do an analog mission. And I looked at her, I didn't know what it meant. And when she explained, I thought she was absolutely nuts, crazy. Moreover, she called it Asclepios. It took the entire staff a whole semester to be able to pronounce that properly. So anyhow, a few missions later, I think there have been three missions so far, a few climate catastrophes later, I realized that she wasn't nuts after all. That actually, our world is bonkers and we have to prepare for it. So you guys are not crazy, and I thank you for being here today to make the, um, the whole thing advance so that we could go in the right direction for analog missions here on Earth and beyond. Thank you. So thank you so much, Martin. Thank you so much for the EPFM, um, support from EPFL, eSpace, um, Space Innovation, really. Uh, it's thanks to them that we are here today at EPFL. Um, it's really, it's such a wonderful university here, such high quality um, studies and high quality work, fantastic organizations. And also there's the lake and the mountains, which, you know, like that's all you want as a student because you're not working 40 or 60 hours a week. <laughs> and we're in a very cool, a wooden igloo today, which is sort of resisting us a bit, giving us a few challenges. It's giving us a few challenges, but also to give you some context. The last time I was in that room was to listen to uh, astronaut Claude Nicolier, actually. And um, he was talking about his life first as a test pilot before talking about his work in, um, as an astronaut. And he was a professor here teaching. He stopped teaching in June, actually. Uh, but this gives you an idea of the quality of the classes that you can have here and how it's just a fantastic environment it is to be here. And I think having the Ascapios missions being built here was a huge inspiration. And fun fact, the first talk of the day will be actually Ascapios. So in a few minutes, we'll get started. And I wanted to actually start with Ascapios because this is how things were born for me. This is how I got into the analog world. It was because uh, Chloe and the whole team of Ascapios put online a little little image saying do you want to be an astronaut and I was like yeah of course but of course ESA only recruits like every 15 years I was like they're not recruiting this year either so of course uh, naive as I was I was the first one to send my CV in and my my motivation letter literally like they posted it 20 minutes bam it was in it you know and, uh, and if you if you're around a recruitment later uh, I have become commander of the Ask Plus One mission and this is then our mission got postponed and um, that's when I realized there's so many of those missions and there's, you know, no one's talking to each other. So this weekend, it's about exchanging. It would be really great if you could go a bit in depth of what makes your missions particular. Because obviously if you say, well, you know, we have an MCC and we have a habitat, yeah, of course you do, you know, or maybe you don't have an MCC, but most of the general stuff will be there. But we, we like to see the, the nice stuff. What makes it you? You know, well, what, what makes your mission particular? What do you want to share with us? Okay, so this we're really excited about the little crunchy bits. But of course, if you can give an overview of your mission, that would be really, really appreciated. I have the site for this morning. I think uh, this afternoon I'm still missing one. Um, but otherwise, please come and send them to me. And also, if you have any problems with photos, I send already and the uh, initial message. But if you do not want to be photographed, also just do let us know. Um, and yeah. Uh, I think we can slowly switch to our first speaker and please wait for the end of the sessions for questions and don't hesitate to mingle, to join the WhatsApp group. Uh, you can see the QR codes in some uh, different places in case you want to exchange contact. This is really about exchange and learning from each other. Okay, so have a fantastic session and Stefania, please come on stage. Thank you.